Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Green. We are so elated to have you with us on our Wednesday night weekly Bible study. We are in the Epistle of James. We're going to finish it up tonight with chapter chapter five. Uh, we have. Um, it's been a great journey. I've really enjoyed this book. It's such a, a practical book. It's it's as practical as the book of Proverbs. And uh, if you allow the, the word of God to permeate, the, the get some of the rust off your thinking, uh, it'll straighten out how we how we look, how we how we act, how we behave, and uh, it will strengthen our testimony a great deal. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to stand before your people once again and to share the unadulterated word of God. So we ask you right now for clarity of mind and thought that we may convey, condense, that we may illuminate, that we may accentuate the learning and, uh, and enhance our growth and development as children of the living God. <coughs> so we thank you. We praise you, and we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, when we, as we, we're finishing up James tonight, but when we, we started here, and, and um, he starts out in chapter 1, gives us the test of faith, and uh, uh, he said, if, if, if your faith, if, if you have the faith that saves, you should be a, not just a hearer of the word, but a doer of the word. Uh, James 1 and 22 says, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Uh, in, in chapter 2, he warns us of the sin of partiality. Uh, a man who's been born, of, uh, born again uh, will not... So partiality as he uh, lives out the Christian life, uh, and he's talking to the to the diaspora, talking to those dispersed uh, uh, saints who were scattered abroad, and they're he's talking to church folk, and church folk have the tendency to show partiality toward those with money. And, and uh, folk who, who are obviously poor treat them like second-class citizens, and at the foot of the cross, we're all equal. And so he warns us against the sin of partiality. And he also said in chapter 2 that faith without works is dead. Uh, you can, uh, it, it, the faith that saves produces good works. You can't work for your salvation, but when you get your salvation, it's going to be apparent by what you do. Uh, in, in chapter 3, he told us that uh, when we say we learn how to tame them tongues. Uh, uh, the, the, he, he compared that the, although the tongue was such a small member, it had a lot of power. Uh, we, we, uh, it controls what we do. If we can control our tongue, we can control our destiny. For some reason, I'm, uh, I'm having a Wi-Fi issue. Do me a favor. Hit that little. Look at the screen. Okay, there we go. So we need to tame our tongues as children of God. He says, my brother, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. And if you're going to be a teacher of the word, you have the responsibility to speak the word correctly. And that's what he's talking about here in, uh, in, 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 in chapter 3. Chapter 4 was a, a warning against worldliness. We can't be married to the world. Uh, if you, you're going to be a child of God, you got to put the things of God ahead of the things of the world. And if, you, if, you're, if your faith is real, it would be evident how we prioritize. The things of God have to have priority over the things of the world. And here we are in chapter 5. He starts out with a warning to the rich. And I want to, uh, uh, yeah, chapter 5 kind of broke up into three parts. 
the uh, warning to the rich, patience and suffering, and the prayer of faith. But let's start out right here, verse number one. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl, for your miseries shall come upon you. This is not a blanket indictment against being rich. And as we go through this, this chapter, we go through these verses, we'll be able to see that what he's referring to are riches, people who became rich by just walking over people, by not treating others right. You see, there is a, a way to attain riches that is God-honoring. Uh, it's all right to have money. We can't, but we, what we don't want is for the money to have us. And that's where the problem is. And as we go through these verses, we can see what he's talking about. So it's, it's important that this is put in context. He is not condemning having wealth. He is not condemning folk who are rich in general. It's just that uh, 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 amongst these Jews, amongst these brethren that this this uh, epistle was written to, there was a problem among the wealthy who just, there were a lot of wealthy Jews that just dog folk because they had money. So he's warning the, the, the brethren who are wealthy, you can't be like this. Let's take a look at these verses. When he says, your, your, when he says, go to now, basically, now, right now, you need to change. If this is how you are, you need to make these changes right now. And the word how, well, that's a, a descriptive um, a, a, a Greek word, elo uzo. And it's real, basically, it's an emphatic. He's, it's, it's, this is some strong language here. And, and, and you, you really need to, to watch yourself. He, he's, he, he's putting emphasis here. He says, your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. A, a moth-eaten. Somebody got a lot of clothes and instead of giving them away, instead of uh, allowing somebody who is less fortunate to use them, less fortunate to have them, you let them, you, you let the moth eat them. Uh, 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 instead of... Um, he says, your riches are corrupted. Look at verse 3. Your gold and your silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and, you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. You, you hear the thing. You can't take your riches to heaven with you. If you have not set up a, 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 a treasure in heaven, you're... Ultimately, your life on earth is going to be miserable. I mean, you can you ever see a situation where a lot of rich folk go and kill themselves. A lot of misery with having when your riches have you, because you can never be satisfied. Uh, 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 you always thinking folks gonna plot to get you, because you don't you don't you, if you when you, your riches are attained by dubious means. It's okay to have money, but you can't just make money any kind of way. Because when you do, it's going to cause you problems. And this is what he's talking about. Your riches, if uh, uh, riches gotten incorrectly, are going to cause you problems. It's not okay to make your money on the backs of other people. It's not okay to make your money uh, uh, selling drugs. It's not okay to make your money uh, getting a, a, a starting a, a gambling venture to keep the people who do business with you broke. It causes more misery than you're going to have to stand before God for all of this. So he says your riches are corrupted. You know, this is about as radical as it gets. And, and, and this is a, a clear-cut condemnation of the rich. But the thing is, money is not evil. Uh, but the love of money is. So he's talking about people who are lovers of money. And, and when, you, when you worship your money rather than the worship of God, you see, God, what... We need kingdom millionaires. Y'all remember when I did the message, um, uh, oh, this was months ago, on kingdom millionaires. God, we, 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 the, the kingdom needs folk with money so that the kingdom can go. 
Uh, you, you know, um, uh, uh, I would love to get hold to a, 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 a million dollars so I can uh, you know, it's a, 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 a vacant church property that I've been having my eyes on. I love to be. I just love to be able to just write them a check and, and, and uh, instead of uh, you know, as much as I enjoy doing this, what we're doing it. Uh, boy, not like being able to walk into an abode that uh, where we can just worship like I, I, I feel it. I long for that. God, let me see it. Uh, but when you when you use your wealth for the for the service of God, God get glory out of it. If you use it just to uh, uh, make yourself look good for men, God is not glorified in that. Verse three: Your gold and your silver is cankered, and the rest of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Yet heap treasure together for the last days. See uh, that big bank balance ain't gonna help you. Uh, you know it, it's um, Proverbs eleven and four says, "A rich is profit not in the day of wrath." But righteousness delivers from death. Uh, 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 Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, He says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, in whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and she and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither cease from yielding fruit. You see, God ain't got no problem with you getting rich or being rich, but you can't let your riches have you. And, 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 and what I say is, and you can't get your riches any kind of way. Look at verse 4. Behold, the hire of laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have, which have reaped are entering into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, Lord of Sabaoth, Lord Almighty. Uh, instead of paying for what you said you're going to pay them, you cheat them. Uh, you, you you go into a business a deal with somebody, somebody do some work for you, you sign a contract, you know when you're not going to pay them and you do like somebody who used to be uh, who was the 46th uh, 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 president of the United States go, before he became the president, ain't calling no name, uh, uh, would uh, uh, go have some folk work on a, one of his buildings knowing he's not going to pay them and he filed for bankruptcy and, and uh, don't give them money. Uh, it ain't nothing wrong with being rich. Uh, by contrast, you get somebody like um, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Jeff Bezos, he signed a contract, you're getting paid. Warren Buffett signed a contract, you're getting paid. You don't have to worry about them. You know, somebody shake your hand, you, you make a deal with somebody, they, they do the work, and then you're going to pay them when they get through. And uh, uh, what he, James is saying, the cries of those work when God hears them. And you will have to, you will have, he's going to hold you into account. I mean, that's messed up there. He condemns the way riches are made when they're made like that. See, it's, it's okay to make money. Uh, and, and, you know, he doesn't put the, the language in, so I got to add it. I got to add the emphasis. God is not saying you can't have money. God is not saying you that, that you can't uh, amass wealth as long as you do it righteously. You can do money. You can do, you can do business. And, and uh, where every situation is a win-win, you don't have to cheat people in order to prosper. Do your business in such a way where you make money and the folk who you're doing business with, they're going to have a good deal and they can make money too. Just because you are the only one, I mean, I know about supply and demand, but you don't jack the price up so high that folk can't afford to live after they buy what you sell it. Especially if you sell them something that they need. Sell them a price where they can live. 
Don't be so greedy that you're the only one who come out ahead. There has to be a better way. And that's what he is talking about here. Look at verse 5. You have lived in pleasure on the earth and, and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Uh, uh, boy, these, these are, th this is some strong language. You, you know, when uh, somebody tell you that, you, um, you, 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 your life on earth, it, it was full of rich, and you just pleased yourself and, and, and with everything you wanted. And you made yourself fat. Like a, 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 an animal ready for the day of slaughter. Because we're going to stand before the Lord. And we're going to have to give an account. And all that money that you think you're having fun with, God is going to require of you. He, he is going to have you, you guys to give an account. Uh, 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 you know, um, it's a lot of misery in the world. And, and when God bless you, he expects you to be a blessing uh, to the kingdom, to humanity. Don't, don't, don't just hold it all for yourself. Because somebody that's listened to the sound of my voice, God is going to put a, 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 a windfall. You're going to get that windfall. You're going to have money that you never even dreamed of. And God is going to search your heart. When that money comes, what you going to do with it? Are you going to be a blessing to the kingdom? Or are you going to go out the back door and uh, smoke yourself into a coma? I don't know who I'm talking to. There's a reason why so many lottery winners end up dead broke after about three or four years. It happens all the time. Because they were unrighteous when they got the money. And when they got it, 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 it destroyed them. That's what he's talking about when you, you, you're being wanton. Uh, uh, you, you, you might have wanted it, but it, 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 you didn't get it right. And God is going, he is not going to... Uh, you just not going to enjoy it. There's great joy in being a blessing. And nothing like making an, an anonymous gift to somebody and you can kind of step back at a distance and see them, see lives changed by what you might have done for them. Now the problem is a lot of us don't believe in making anonymous gifts. We want them to know that we the one gave it to them. If you can get past that, God can be pleased with you. And, you, and, and uh, when we can give that way, uh, God has a way of, he is going to be glorified. Verse 7. And, and really when it comes down, verses 7 through 12 shows us a, a situation here. The coming of Christ, we see it as a comfort. Okay, now watch this. There's patience and suffering. This is the theme from verses 7 through 12. Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, uh, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth and had long patience for it until he received the early and latter rain. See, the coming of Christ is going to correct all the wrongs in the world going to correct all the wrongs in the world and you um, when he's saying you're, you're, you're patient you know uh, he uses the farmers they have to wait for the crop to grow and they put the work in but they got to wait you got to put the work in but you got to wait you reap what you sow but you reap later, and you reap greater. You plant one seed, and that one seed might grow a tree that produces enough fruit that uh, uh, one seed can grow an orange tree. It takes seven years for that orange tree to actually start producing uh, uh, bountifully, but that one tree might produce ten boxes of fruit. One seed. You produce ten boxes of fruit, and, and, but it takes it takes time. Uh, anybody ever bought bananas in the store and they're green? Uh, you, it takes time for them to ripen. They, they might be green the day you buy them, but if you wait a few days, they're going to be yellow, and then they're going to taste good. 
And that's just, a, you know, and that's just the way it is. So it requires patience, whether you're farming or whether you're eating certain types of, 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 of fruit, it's going to, you have to wait for it to get right. And if you have the patience, you will be able to enjoy it even more. Uh, uh, you know, this is, um, this is one of those situations. And see, when he talked about the re uh, until he received the early and latter rain, that the early rain, you see, some of us are experiencing the early rain right now. And, and just because the early rain does not produce the harvest. The early rain allows the seed to germinate in the ground. And it's the latter rain that's going to bring about the harvest. As the, as the plants uh, uh, mature and they begin to grow and grow fruit. So when, when the, that latter rain comes and it nourishes the uh, the fruit as it begins to mature on the tree or on the vine, it's the latter rain that brings you the harvest. The, the former rain gets it started. Some of y'all have got started, but you don't have the patience to, to see it through. I've seen folks start on jobs, and because it might seem a little boring to them at the beginning, they haven't learned everything they need to do that job yet. And until you learn all the parts to the job, the job initially, uh, most training programs started a piece. Uh, you start this section, go, go, you might have five or six modules, and by the time you get to the end, it might be a 12 step, a 10 step, or a seven or three part learning process. And, and part one is very fundamental and very boring. Part two got a little bit more detail in it. But it's still boring. The, the exciting stuff might not happen until part 10. But you're ready to quit at part 7. Because it, it hadn't got exciting yet. You, ain't, you don't see no real money yet. You, you haven't learned the processes yet. And you, when, the, when, the, when the latter rain comes, you're gone. And, and, and he is... He is, he is Trying to get us to be patient. Patience is a great thing. Look at verse 8. He said, Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. We are to wait, and we, are, and we need to wait on the, on the coming of the Lord. We always need to live as if Jesus Christ could come back at any minute, but we also need to operate as if it, he is, it's, it's going to be for a while. And um, we so we occupy until he comes. We stay busy. We stay busy. He can come back in the moment. He don't want to. He, we don't want him to come back, and we idle. Stay busy. Be productive, but you have to be patient. Allow the blessings of God to overtake you. He's, you know, some folk give up for because before they could ever get into uh, into the overflow, they, they, they give up. Uh, they don't understand that it's not their season right now. Your first year on the job, you just learning the job. Uh, I, I know people that quit for quit one job. They they, they actually learn uh, as much as. Uh, uh, you know, they get proficient at a job and they may not be that at the level in the organization what they want. And they quit. And they go get another job making another nickel an hour, another dollar an hour. But what they don't realize, they have, they, have the, uh, uh, they, they are in the learning curve on the job where they are. And they start all over again at the beginning of the new learning curve. And what I always used to tell my students, you when you go on a job, you wanna if you if you really want to get progress on the job, you make yourself indispensable to that organization. If you can make yourself indispensable to that organization, that person, whoever your supervisor is, if they end up getting a promotion, if they know like I know, they'll get you promoted too. Keep them right up under you. See, some people, they think it's them. They don't realize it's you. God got the anointing on you, not them. 
And, and if you ele- you allow the person above you to look good, see something I learned a long time ago: make your boss look good. You might you might know more about the job than your boss. Uh, you may be in a situation where you actually have to train the person over you, and they're gonna make more money than you. You can't be uh, jealous. God is gonna get you yours. Just because you may be more competent than the person above you, make them look good. God will operate the way He operates, the way God operates, He is going to create an opportunity for you. You just hang in there. Be patient. God got you. Don't get pissed off on the job and leave just because something you, you think that they're taking advantage of you. I see this all the time. And you, you end up having to start all over again at square one. And here you were at square 10, they actually ready to promote you. They might not have told you about it now what you what really as a, as a, a boss, as a supervisor, what you should always do is make sure people uh, you know, you may not have an opportunity for them right now, but if you if you if you put yourself in a position where the business can expand, you create opportunities for yourself. Don't be a uh, don't sag on the job. Don't lag on the job. Don't nag on the job. When we can uh, go on somebody's job and we we become indispensable. The boss don't want to do nothing unless it's going, unless he, he, he knows if he, he can count on you. If, he, if when if people know that you're dependable, see, when I used to make my schedule, I used to put my best people on first. What no? Giving everybody the same number of hours, that's the dumbest thing in the world. You give the hours to the most productive people. The running back that Tom can't get but uh, a 2.7 yards a carry, I look at old Melvin Gordon at the, um, uh, what's that, the uh, Denver Broncos. Melvin used to be a good running back. I remember when Melvin used to get five yards a carry. Lately, he ain't been giving him two yards a carry, and they keep him on the bench. And when they do put him in, he fumbles. I can't put you, I'm, we're trying to win football games. You put the people in that, that's going to get the work done. Verse 9, grudge not one against another. Brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth at the door. What he's saying here is, get your house in order. Get your act together. Get your affairs straight now. Because Jesus can come back at any time. And the opportunity that you have right now could be lost. Verse 10, take my brother and the prophets who may have spoken in the name of the Lord as for an example of, for, of suffering, affliction, and of patience. And he used the, the prophets. He, the, the, uh, uh, Israel was notorious for killing the prophets. They gave them a hard time. Uh, 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 you, you know, they, 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 made, they suffered greatly. Verse 11, Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord. And the Lord is pitiful and of tender mercy. See, Job was an example of somebody who suffered. Uh, the patience of Job, that's one of the things that we always talk about as we study scripture. Job had a lot of patience. Job, God sent him through some trials, but at the end, uh, the, uh, 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 one of my favorite scriptures, uh, uh, Job 42 and 10, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job after he prayed for his friends. And that sets us up for what we, the, the section that we're about to get to. But above all things, my brother, and swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay nay, lest ye fall into condemnation. It is um, being the kind of person that you don't need to be under oath to tell the truth. If you have the reputation of always being truthful, folks don't have to worry about and can I depend on what he's saying. You tell somebody you're going to do something, you do it. That's how you want to be. 
This is just simple, practical stuff. Uh, somebody listening to me right now, they may not be on their on the best job, but you do your best on the job you got. All you're doing is getting prepared for the next one. Uh, a door closed and God is going to open another one for you. Sometimes you just you do have to leave a job. Uh, if, if the Lord tells you to, to leave this one, leave it because he's going to open up another one. In fact, he may have it already open. You know, you uh, when you uh, if you are a witness for Jesus Christ and somebody you end up losing a job for righteousness' sake. Now, I didn't say go on the job instead of doing the job. You know, you trying to give sermons at the workplace. No, that's not it. Because we live in America. Uh, you're not supposed to proselytize on the job. You, you want to uh, conduct yourself on the job, you want your light shining so brightly that men can't miss it. And somebody's going to come up to you and say, hey, what, what it is about you? Then you get to tell them about Jesus. You don't go beating folk across the head by Jesus, 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 Jesus when he's supposed to be working. Uh, you know, I've seen that plenty of times. Look at verse 12. And above all, in anything, my brethren, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea, yea, be nay, and your nay, nay. But it, look at verse 13. It, is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing songs. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, that, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord. So we've gotten into, so he, he, he left us with, as an example of Job and the prophet who, who exhibited patience. But, and because Job exhibited his patience, the captivity of Job turned after he prayed for the same people who were criticizing him. Guess what? Uh, you ain't no need being mad at somebody. Just pray for him. And, he, and what we find out, that there's power when a righteous man prays. That's what he's telling us here in these verses. See, the, the afflicted are to pray. And the man are to sing songs. And, and the sick people, uh, 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 when you're sick, you need to do two things. Pray for yourself. And then enlist the, the aid of others that call for the elders to pray for you and anoint you with oil. Now they use oil really for medicinal purposes in that day. Uh, really, the, they use oil like a, a medicine. So that means, see, medical care. Pray for yourself. Get other folk who can pray to pray for you also. As Hank Hanegraaff used to say, prayer is firing the wind shot. When you got a strong prayer life, God, uh, it opens doors. Uh, in fact, you need to keep praying. Uh, look at verse 15. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. <clears throat> As uh, my cousin, uh, Apostle T.C. Maxwell, like to say, you need to push. Pray until something happens. How, how, how long should I pray until something happens? You're in a situation that don't look good, you keep praying until something happens. Don't stop praying until something happens. God hears the, the righteous man's prayer. And you keep praying until something happens. You're in distress, you need to be praying. When good times come, you need to praise, but you still need to keep praying. This is the instruction for the church. You, uh, life ain't going like you want it, you need to be praying. And when life gets better, you praise God and you keep on praying. Somebody help me. Look at verse 17. Well, let me go back to 16. Confess your faults one to another 
Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man avail as much. Here's the thing. You confess your faults when you are not harm somebody. You confess your faults before men. Okay? But you confess your sins to God. If you wrong somebody, God reveals to you. And sometimes we, 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 we say the wrong thing. We might have done something that hurt somebody and we didn't even see it. And when the Holy Spirit reveals it to us, uh, you need to be big enough to step to him and say, Hey man, I, I didn't realize I, I know what I said. And I, I, I was wrong. I was wrong. Apolog I apologize. I hope you can forgive me. You see, when we can go to somebody that we are wrong, that, that, that is God-honoring. But not only that, it strengthens the relationship with the person that we wronged. If, if somebody wronged you in Matthew 18, you're supposed to go to them. And if they hear you, you have gained your brother. Well, guess what? If you were wronged somebody, it worked the same way. Confess your faults. Hey, man, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have said that. I, I hope you can forgive me. Uh, as much as it is in me, I would not do that again. Then verse 17. Eli Elias, uh, he's talking about Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And verse 18, and he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. If you go to, uh, I think that's uh, 1 uh, Kings chapter 17, um, uh, uh, Elijah prayed to God, and uh, see here, Elijah was under persecution, and uh, uh, Ahab was giving him all kinds of grief, and, and Elijah uh, uh, prayed to God, and God stopped the rain. God stopped the rain. And Elijah went to the, the widow of Zarephath. Y'all remember the story where uh, the widow, then she was down to her last uh, um, a handful of meal and a little oil. She had enough uh, meal and oil to make two little flapjacks. And she said, I got just enough for me and my son. And uh, after we eat this, we're going to die because there ain't no more. And Elijah said, uh, take that crew, take that little bit you got, and you make me some cakes. And then you make some for you. And if you listen to the man of God, uh, uh, if you uh, uh, take care of the man of God, God is going to make sure that what you have does not run out. And, and by the time it ran out, it was enough for one meal, but they ate for six more months. And by the time they, uh, it ran out, the rain stopped. The rain started back. Y'all go to First Kings chapter seventeen. Read about the the, the about the uh, the widow of Zarephath. And, and, and so basically, because God honored Elijah's prayer, Elijah was a man subject to light passions. He went through it. He caught pure hell from Ahab and Jezebel. Guess what? If you're walking righteously before me before men, there are evil people in power that may cause you a lot of grief. But you can't throw it in the towel. You can't quit serving God just because serving God causes you causes you problems. You don't want to uh, 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 throw it in the towel. You don't want to damage your witness just because you're catching a little grief. Verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and convert him, and let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his ways shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of, of sins. It, you know, uh, when God can use you to communicate his truth so that someone who is messing up will straighten up, someone who is on their way to hell will get saved because of your witness, God is well pleased and, and uh, uh, it, it's it's just a great thing. See, you know, it's a great thing when God can use you to save somebody. To to to, He can use you as an instrument to that uh, that can bring about the salvation of a lost person. And, and you want to live your life in such a way where God can He can use you. 
you, you, when, 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 when the opportunity comes to, to be a great witness for Jesus, you do it. And, and you, you, because of your prayer life, if you, you, there's just some folk that you want to see say, pray for them regularly. Keep praying. I'm talking to myself. This is the strategy. Keep praying. Keep praying for them until something happens. Uh, TC, I told you I was going to give you credit for that because I push. P pray until something happens. Uh, that wasn't original with me. That that was uh, I heard my my cousin Bishop, uh, uh, Apostle T C say that first, but I, I've been saying it ever since I heard it when we did uh, in Luke. Um, uh, I think it was chapter four when the disciples came to Jesus and said, "Lord, teach us to pray." That was the concept there. Lord, teach us to pray. Well, you keep praying until something happens because God's gonna be able to use you. When you pray, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. Just pray for folk. Pray for yourself when you're sick, but pray for others when you see them in distress. Don't talk about them, pray for them. Father in heaven, I thank you for the opportunity to stand before your children once again. Thank you right now, Lord. I pray that you will just uh, continue to use us in a profound way to bring about a change, to bring about growth, to bring about prosperity. Bind the work of the enemy that's come against us. Bind every foul spirit that may prevent your will from coming to pass in the life of your, of your in the lives of your children. Forgive us of our sin that our prayers are not hindered, and let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Uh, next time we're actually going to go into First Peter. It's another great book. Very we we you know, we're just going straight through First and Second Peter. Uh -oh. It's another very practical book. It's more doctrine in Peter than uh, James. is more practical uh, uh, instruction on how to be a better Christian. But um, we're going to get quite a bit out of Peter off First Peter. I, I really, we, I get something out of all of this. And, and if you can get the word in you abundantly, God can get the word out of you abundantly. And it's just that simple. So when they put the squeeze on you, what's going to come out is the word. Uh, we'll see y'all next Sunday at um, 1025. Now, on fifth Sunday, we're going to be uh, with um, Saved by Grace Outreach. We'll do a combined service at 11 o'clock. So the broadcast will start a little later. Uh, Saved by Grace do their own um, broadcast. Uh, uh, Apostle Pinckney uh, live stream his, and I live stream mine. We'll, do, be, we'll be doing it both at the same time, I imagine. But it's gonna, we're gonna have, we always have a great time when we um, uh, we commune and, and uh, we fellowship with Saved by Grace. I, I thank the Lord for him. I thank the Lord for bringing him uh, into my life. And it's just been uh, uh, that group of brethren with um, the uh, Kingdom Workers International. Um, great plan to do a lot of great things with the Lord. And I, I look uh, forward to uh, being with them and seeing what God going to do. Uh, uh, remember, read First Peter chapter 1 next time, and we'll see y'all next time. Look, now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding great joy, the only true and wise God, may glory, majesty, dominion, and power, now and forever, and all of God's people say amen. Now, if this uh, teaching has been a blessing to you, don't be afraid to give. You can use a cash app. Cash App or Zelle, uh, dollar sign green WL and Zelle, it's a two four six uh, a six eight nine two four six five eight nine two. Any gift of any amount, we greatly appreciate it. We'll see y'all next time.